Hi folks, I want to take a minute to describe for you how the pulse width modulated output or the PWM output of the Arduino can be used to make a pseudo analog output. So it's not really analog, but it looks like an analog output at a, at a brief glance. And this is the circuit we played with in the lab the other day. We've got a, this represents the Arduino pin three, uh, the PWM output, uh, sometimes called pulse width modulated. and uh, here's the 10k resistor and the 10 microfarad capacitor that we used to uh, modify that output. If, if I go ahead and run the model, you'll see that the uh, output, let's change the scale here a little bit to make it easier to see what's going on. The output's at 5 volts for 1 millisecond, then it's 0 for a millisecond, and then it just repeats. So it's got a period of 2 milliseconds and it's high for one millisecond. So that means it's got a 50% duty cycle. In other words, 50% of the time it's high, 50% of the time it's low. If I connect the resistor and capacitor to that guy and we look at what that looks like, you'll notice it, it's just barely charging up here. Let's go ahead and, and zoom out in time a little bit. Make that 500 milliseconds instead of five milliseconds. And then we run it. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the, you can, now there's the square wave from the PWM output. I'm going to eliminate that so we can focus on the charge on the capacitor. You'll notice it's, uh, it looks like a charging capacitor. If you zoom in though, you'll see it's got this sawtooth flavor to it. And that's because it's charging and discharging, charging and discharging every time the pulse output goes high and low. But on the average, it ends up winding up right around two and a half volts, which is half of five volts. So the claim I made in class the other day was that the output of the RC circuit is uh, the average of the voltage coming out of the Arduino. It's high half of the time, so you'd expect it to be the average voltage would be half of five volts, so around two and a half volts. But you also notice it takes a long time for that to happen. We don't really get to five volts until three or four hundred milliseconds or to two and a half volts rather, until three or four hundred milliseconds after the thing starts. The time constant of a 10 kilo ohm and 10 microfarad RC combination is about a hundred milliseconds. So this, you got to wait a couple, two or three time constants before you're really close to the, the final value. So, but in the end, when you do end up at the final value, you still end up with this little variation that's going on and that's because uh, the RC circuit is still having to charge and discharge but it just doesn't get very far before it flips and the thing turns the other way. That's why you want the time constant of the RC circuit to be a lot bigger than the um, time, the period of the waveform. Well the waveform's got a period of two milliseconds. The uh, time constant of the circuit is about a uh, hundred milliseconds so it's 50 times bigger. So it turns out you'd expect the variation in the voltage to be about a 50th of 5 volts. So that's about, uh, let's see, a 50th of 5 would be um, about a tenth of a volt, something like that. So we're looking at 2.45 to 2.5. So that's about a 0.05, 50 millivolts. So there you go. Um, anyway, that gives you an idea of how this things work. If you want the variation to be smaller, then you need a bigger time constant. But the longer the time constant you pick, the longer it takes for the thing to settle down. So it's a trade-off between uh, the precision of the output, not the precision, I should say, the, uh, mm, the smoothness of the output, and the time, it take, time you have to wait for the output to settle down to the final value. Just to play around with this thing, if I uh, if I change the parameters, actually let's do it this way. Uh, the parameters of the power supply, if I change this to half a millisecond, that would be, or better yet, four tenths of a millisecond, that's uh, now 20% of the two milliseconds. So we would expect the um, final voltage to be 20% of five, that should be around one volt. So if you do that, you'll notice now we are settling down to around one volt. So by changing the fraction of the time that the thing is high, you vary the 
uh, final voltage. If I zoom in and look at the, let's do this. So I change the time it's high to 20% of the waveform. You'll notice it's going 5 volts for about 4 tenths of a millisecond, and then it's 0 volts for the balance, which is about uh, 1.6 milliseconds. Um, and that's what's causing the final voltage to end up being 1 volt. There you go. So, uh, of course, you can, with LT Spice, you can go in and, and modify these numbers and see what happens. Like if I change this to 5 microfarads, now when I run the thing again, it's going to settle down a lot sooner. But what happens to the variation? It gets bigger, right? So now I'm at uh, 0.1, I guess, instead of 0 0.05. So um, I'm sorry. What is that? Uh, 0.01 instead of 0 0.005. There you go. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. Um, let, let me show you how you build this thing. So I'm going to start a fresh circuit. So what you do, is you hit F2 to pull in components. I can say voltage, that gives me a voltage source. I can say R, that gives me a resistor. I can say uh, C, that gives me a capacitor. I'm going to move this resistor over here up a little bit and then turn it and then let me zoom in F3 I can make wires and then I can right click on the net here and label it as ground okay then I can put in the kind of power supply I don't want a DC supply, I want a pulse. So I'm going to choose pulse. I'm going to say it's initially uh, 0 volts, goes up to 5 volts, has no delay. The rise time is 0.1 microsecond. Fall time, 0.1 microsecond. The time that it's on is, uh, let's make this one 0.8 milliseconds, and the period is 2 milliseconds. So that should be, two, what would it be? 40%. 40% of the uh, period. So I should get 40% of 5, which is going to be 2 volts. So that'll end up settling down at 2 volts. For the resistance, I'll just put in uh, 10K. For the capacitance, this time I'll put in 5 microfarads. You can use U for microfarads. And we'll run the thing. Oh, and I need a transient command. So I'm going to say, give me a spice directive, transient. Uh, 0.1 milliseconds, and let's go for uh, 500 milliseconds. Just set that in there, any old place. Run it, and there I have it. So I'm winding up. Let's turn on the grid, and you can see I'm winding up right around 2 volts, just like we expected. But it takes, uh, you know, two or 300 milliseconds to get there. So if I zoom in, you can see there I am. I end up at 2 volts, but I've got this variation. So anyway, I hope that helps, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.